if you have a friend that you would trust with your life, they do exercise sometimes for trust where you stand behind somebody and say, fall back, and when they fall back, you catch them. It's a little scary. Now, Teradata has a fall back feature. If you want rows extra protected, this is not automatic. You actually have to create a table and say, I want fall back. Fall back will protect you if an AMP fails. Because as you can see here, each of my AMPs hold two rows and they copy each other's two rows into their fallback area. And now in case the first AMP breaks, AMP 2 is going to read its rows and it can also read the fallback rows for its buddy. You see, when you fall back, someone's got your back. These two buddy amps have each other's back. So fallback has to be actually requested because you're afraid you could lose an amp. And if you do, the system just keeps right on rolling because the data can be read by another amp. Now, I want you to look at these amps. And you would probably guess, oh, that these amps are probably right next to each other, practically touching because they're watching each other's data. Nothing could be further from the truth. They want these amps physically as far away as possible in case a disaster happens in an area. They go, don't worry, that's fallback protected over there. So you're going to see that even though logically we put these together and say those two amps are in cluster one, these two amps are in cluster two, they're going to be physically separated in a different node. And that's the way it works. Here you can see four nodes. Back when we first started doing this with VPROX in these nodes, Teradata would put about 10 amps in each node. Now, the CPUs are so powerful, the memory is so strong, they're getting like 40 amps in each one of these nodes. So with a four node system, you're going to have like 160 amps. I've only got four in each just to show you how fallback and the clustering is going to work together. Now, in node one, I've got one amp in red and blue and black and green. And then in node two, I've got an amp in red and blue and black and green. The two red amps are fallback protected. That's cluster one. The two blue amps, they're buddies. That's cluster two. Of course, we've got the black, and that's cluster three, and the green's cluster four. You see, why put two amps in the same node in the same cluster? If the node goes down, there's no protection. So even if we lost, the entire first node, they would say, can we still query the system? Yes, we can because we've only lost one amp in cluster one, one amp in cluster two, one amp in cluster three, and one amp in cluster four. And as you can see down below, we've got our purple amps and our orange and so on, and those are in clusters five, six, seven, and eight. They will always have buddy amps in the same cluster watching each other's back in a different location in a different node so if an entire node goes down system still works you can always lose one amp in a cluster because that amp's data is backed up in the fallback area of its cluster buddy now we've lost the entire node one all four amps gone, but we're still running because in node number two, that data has been backed up in their buddy amps, and they'll just have to do a little bit more work to retrieve it. There's always good news and bad news. There's always some type of trade-off, right? Well, the good news is if amp one goes down, amp two's got its data. But what price do you pay in terms of space? 50 percent. Think about it. We've just written a row to AMP1. We've got to write that row to AMP2 
in the fallback area. So each time we write a row, update a row, insert a row, delete a row, we have to do the same on the other amp. The price you pay, double the space. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Need to learn SQL for Nintiza, Teradata, or Aster? Visit coughingdw.com for our helpful training guides. With Teratom, SQL stands for So Quickly Learned.